Hey guys, today I have a really, really cool creative lock to share and as an added bonus, it's actually brand new. It's a brand new patented high security mechanical lock. Uh, it's called the Bowley Lock. It's from Canada and I was lucky enough to get this uh, prototype uh, sent to me so I'm really happy about that and I'm, I'm really excited to share with you all the cool features of this lock because as you can see from the keys it's got some pretty cool new features that I have never seen before and I think a lot of you out there will be interested to see how this works. I'm going to operate this for you now just to show you that it does work very nice and smoothly. And uh, yeah I have some diagrams that we're going to go over too and we'll really look at the nitty gritty details of how this lock works and why it provides really great security. And uh, on their website, they claim that this lock should be unpickable and unbumpable. And uh, I, I really think they have a good case for that because I've been racking my brain and I cannot figure out a way to pick or bump this lock. Um, a lot of you out there might have some ideas though, so please uh, stick around, take a look at the diagrams, and we can look at all the cool features of the new Bowley lock. And uh, please feel free to use the timestamps in the description below, and you could jump to any section you like. Okay, guys, just some really quick details about this lock, and then we'll get into the diagrams. There's some, some stuff you got to know before you look at the diagrams, otherwise it could get confusing. The first thing you should know is that this is actually a hidden keyway lock, meaning that this chamber here is not the keyway. Uh, the real keyway is actually hidden at the top behind the faceplate here. Uh, this uh, chamber here actually has no pins in it, nothing you can manipulate. It's just an empty chamber. So kind of similar to the forever lock, there's a, a key chamber that you load up and then you have to move to the proper position to get to the real keyway. Uh, the second thing you should know is that this lock is kind of like an adaptation of a classic pin tumbler lock. There are five pins in this lock. Again, they're hidden, so you can't really manipulate them. And here's the bidding of the key. Let's get a uh, zoom for you. And uh, there's other special features. So that's the bidding. There's a piece missing out of the middle of the key. And then there's a little extra bit at the end of the key right there, which serves a very specific function. Uh, we'll go over these key features one by one. Uh, the first is that little tip of the key, that little bit. That is where all the tension of the lock goes. This is the only part of the key which tensions the lock. So if I were to stick the key in, but I do not push that little tip of the key to its proper uh, destination, there's no tension. So uh, you can see it does nothing. But then when I move the key to the proper position and I can actually feel it snap into place, I can push this into the uh, tensioning chamber just like that and we can move our bolt. Great, right? So uh, why is there a piece of metal missing out of the middle of this key? And that's because the chamber inside of here is kind of like a tube, right? It's like a 3D cylinder. This key will actually go into the tube and thread around it like this. So whenever I'm rotating that key, you, I'm, I'm rotating it around this tube. So, and that is kind of a very clever design to prevent picking because uh, if you if, imagine this is a 3D tube, if I were to stick a pick in here just like this, I'll be hitting the top of that tube. The pins are up here and I cannot reach those pins because the top of that tube, so that, that's what I'm doing here. I'm just hitting the top of that cylinder. This, the pins are up here and protected. One more thing you should know is that the pins of this lock are resting in an overset position. So when the key is rotated, when the key is rotated to the top here, I'm not pushing the pins. What I'm doing is I'm allowing them to fall into the proper uh, positions. So the pins are pushed up all the way and they're pushed up by a secondary cylinder. So there's two cylinders in here, a small inner one and a bigger outer one. The pins are resting overset, pushed up by this outer cylinder. The key comes in, threads through the inner cylinder. I'll rotate the key up and uh, there'll be a slot cut out into the outer cylinder which will allow the pins to fall and hit the bidding and fall to the 
proper depth. So I'm not pushing it to a proper height. I'm allowing the pins to fall to a proper depth. So I know that's confusing, but please look at these diagrams. We'll do it step by step so you can understand just how clever this lock is. First step, insert the key into the lock and we'll see what that looks like from the inside. Step two, I will now rotate the key in the lock, but with no tension applied. So I'm now rotating the key. Let's take a look. Step three, I will move the key into position at the top of the lock and I'll feel it click into place. Now the, pin, the key is actually touching the pins, but the pins are still pushed up over set because they are not hitting the correct pieces of the bidding of the key. That will not happen until I push this key in. So in this resting position, just in the correct, in the correct position but not pushed in, we can see what that looks like now. Step four, I will now push in the key, which will push the tensioning bit into the tensioning slot. You hear it click into place. And now the pins have fallen to their proper depth and the pins are at shear line. So we could see that the pins are at shear line just like this. Okay, step five, since the pins are at shear line, it allow us to rotate the cylinder and we can move our bolt just like this. So I'll let you see what that looks like now. Okay, so let's go through the motions one more time. Let's uh, pretend we wanna lock our door. We'll stick the key in and then we can lock our door. And then if we go to work, uh, well, then we could come home from work and then we want to get in our house. We just unlock the door just like this and we're done. So the internals seem confusing, but actually the use is very, very straightforward and simple. Almost the same as using just a normal everyday lock, um, but with added security measures. So speaking of security, let's go over the security details and find out what makes this so hard to uh, pick or uh, bump open. First, let's start with picking. All right, guys, so let's talk about why this lock is gonna be such a nightmare to pick. Uh, when you pick a lock, of course, you need tension to rotate the core, and then you also need a tool to uh, manipulate the pins and push them to their proper position. So we already talked about why this tension tool won't work because it needs to be in a very specific slot to back up the lock, so that's out of the picture. And then we already talked about why this type of pick won't work because the pins are protected, they're up here and there's no way to reach them uh, because I'm right now I'm just in that inner cylinder. So that's a, this type of tools out. So we need to make brand new tools to pick this lock. And I know a lot of you guys out there love to make picking tools and that's really cool. So let's think about it. Uh, if you were uh, gonna make a tool, you might wanna make it look like the key, right? So like, okay, let's make a tension tool. What if we made it look like the key and then we remove the bidding and just left this little nib? That way I could stick the key in and then I could get tension and then I could get tension like this. But now you have a problem is that any sort of other tool you want to stick in is now not, you're blocking yourself. Whatever you're using for tension now is now blocking the pins. So um, yeah, I mean, this design is kind of like ingenious in its simplicity in that uh, even if you stuck something in there to get tension, the pins have fallen too far. So now the pins are under set. Now you can like, okay, now I wanna push those pins up to the proper height because they're under set, but there's no way to access them. Okay, so that's as far as I got with that. And let's say uh, you want to just manipulate the pins. Let's go to the as that aspect. Let's say you somehow made a tool to rotate those cylinders. Let's say you have a tool, you rotate the cylinders and let the pins fall. And now the pins are fallen and exposed because you've rotated the cylinders. So maybe, you, I mean, now this type of pick won't work. You still need something shaped like the key. But here's the problem. If your pick was shaped like your key, there's just, 
I mean, it has to be hooked over, remember, because your pick has to go around that tube like this. So your pick has to be this shape, has to go around. But as soon as you're in this position, you cannot pick. There's not enough room to do any picking. So let's just say this was some sort of picking tool. We'd stick it in. We put it in a tensioning slot. And you're like, yeah, we have tension now. And then you're like, wait, how am I supposed to, you know, I can't pick like this. Um, even if we, let's say you had some sort of rake, a rake shaped like the key. We'll put it in, we'll stick it in up there. And then you can't rake it because every time you take the rake out, you're losing tension. Remember, we've lost the tension. So if we want to get tension, we are now block the pins. I mean, what an ingenious design. If you want tension or pick, you, you can't have both. You could either have tension or touch the pins, but you cannot have both. And that's why this lock, I think, is pretty much unpickable because how can you do both? If you guys have any ideas, uh, please um, let me know because you guys are smarter than I am. <laughs> so uh, please, if you have any ideas, let me know about that. But uh, let's move on to bumping. All right, guys, so why would this lock be super hard to bump if not just straight up unbumpable? Well, it has to do with the fact that the pins are not being pushed up in this lock. Remember, they're falling. So let's go over how someone might want to make a bump key for this lock. So let's say you had a bully key and you're like, I want to make a bump key. How do you make a bump key? Well, you have to file down all the biddings to their lowest depth. Okay, fair enough. Let's uh, imagine we did that and we'll stick our bully lock key in and then we'll rotate it up. And you're like, okay, we're one step out. Now we can, you know, hit our key with a bump hammer and, uh, you know, try to bump our lock. The only problem with that is that when you hit this in, the pins are actually falling they're they're not going to be thrown up because remember they're already if i pull this out the pins are overset so the key this is locked it's not going to do anything plus there's no tension so you have no tension on the lock and the pins are overset this is not a good position to bump a lock so when i push this in when i hit it in that's the only point i get tension but by the time i get tension the pins have already fallen and they've fallen too far because you've remember the, the, the cuts on the bump key are the deepest depths. So you just don't have enough kinetic, you don't have enough time and you don't have enough kinetic energy to be able to bump those pins back up. So right now the pins are overset. I'm gonna hit it in and turn. It's not gonna work because you won't get tension until the very end and the pins have fallen and that's it. There's no, now if I hit this key, I'm not gonna make the pins jump to the proper height just by hitting the key. You remember, you have to take it out a step, but once you take it out a step, the pins are now overset and the, the lock is locked. So I'm sorry if that was confusing, but I, I know some of you guys out there will understand. I just don't think that you can bump this because of this ingeniously clever design. Um, I mean, time will tell, but, uh, you, you see what I mean? When I really racked my brain thinking about this, I just don't think it's bumpable at least, uh, until I hear some comments from you guys. Um, yeah. Okay. So now let's talk about something very important and that's how strong is this key? Because it doesn't matter. This could be the most secure lock in the whole world. If your key breaks, you are in bad shape. So with this key being so thin here and the piece missing and this piece of metal being the only portion of tension, you don't want this to break. So how strong is this key? Let's go to the next section and we'll find out. All right, guys, as you can see, I have some keys set up here. I got a Corbin Russwin key here. I got a best style duplicate key here and I got an ABIS key here and I'm just going to use one hand to try to see how much it takes to bend or break these keys and then we're going to try it with the uh, bully lock after that. So 
Uh, first up is the Corbin Russ win. So let's try to bend this key with one hand and we can see we've done it. So we've bent that key. Next is the best style key and we can just bend the key just like that. Not too bad. And then of course the Abus, we can try to bend this and we've actually broken that. So, <laughs> all right. So these, I'll take these out. And these are now ruined and that did not take much force. You saw that, right? So now let's use a bully lock key. In fact, uh, this key, when, in, when you pick it up, you could really feel the quality of this key and uh, you could tell it's really well made. In fact, the information I got is that it's made out of solid 17.4 stainless steel, a very high quality stainless steel and uh, also corrosion resistant. So let's get this set up almost like in the middle of the bidding here, just like this. And we'll put some strain and stress on the key and see if we can't bend or break this key because if this lock is so secure, you really don't want your key to break. So here we go. One hand, we're going to try to bend or break this key. <sighs> Guys, I, I really am trying my hardest to bend or break this key. <sighs> Ouch. Man, let me tell you, that is not going. That really, that is one of the strongest keys. That is one of the strongest keys I've ever seen in my life. Let's take this out. And we can see that key is not even bent even a little bit. There's not even a scratch on this key. Oh my goodness. Let's see if it still works. <laughs> Let's see if it still works here. Let me move the camera and we can see that this key is still in perfect condition after all that stress and strain. So if this thing is not gonna even bend under that much stress and strain, I'm not concerned about it bending or breaking during just normal operation. Wow, what a high quality, strong key, awesome. So some of you out there might be asking, how do I get my hands on one of these beautiful bully locks? And the answer is right now you can't because this is just a prototype, but the good news is soon they will have a Kickstarter and if everything goes to plan, maybe we could get some of these locks in 2016. So uh, please uh, visit their official website if you want more information, more diagrams, anything. Uh, it's www.bowlylockcompany.com. And uh, yeah, from what I understand, these things are gonna be very reasonably priced. So I think a lot, it's gonna really open the door for a lot of people to afford very high quality, very pick resistant, very bump resistant lock like the Bowley lock. Not only will it serve you as a great security device, but if you love keys and locks like me, you're gonna take joy in just using it and looking at it. So anyway, thanks for your attention. Hope you enjoyed the presentation and uh, see you next time.